And we're back with more of the Pope on Film. It's time, Bunny! It is time. Yes, Bunny, my friend. It is time once again for all of us here at the Pope on Film podcast to uh, Charleston and Madison our way into the second half of our big shoe. And it is said second half, wherein we finally and eventually get around to discussing our all new low fat, zero carbs, non GMO, all natural, and made with Bunny Williams' own secret recipe of 11 herbs and spices. Uh, movie of the week. I lost my place for a second there. And this week, we're beginning the Christmas season with a look at the 2021 horror film hell on the shelf deck the halls with death i'm looking at this poster that you've got here there's not a there's hardly a single freaking child in this movie no it's just three dudes one of whom is the director yes uh so bunny on a scale from 9 to 10, how much did you love this cinematic masterpiece? Uh, how many how many times did you, you cry? 9.2. Yeah, yeah, it moved me too. Now, before we discuss the ins and outs of this celluloid treasure, this masterpiece amongst films, uh, we need to go a few episodes back, five episodes to be precise, back to episode 438, the last episode of our summer of covid exploitation. We watched the movie Virus Shark, directed yes. by Mark Polonia, the new king of crap. How many movies, Bunny, do you think he directed in 2021? Oh, we kind of went through that the last time uh, a, a lot. He directed eight movies in 2021 alone. This guy cranks out crappy low-budget movies, gets them on Amazon Prime and Tubi in the cheap DVD bin at Walmart, and makes a nice paycheck. So good for Mark Polonia. He's found a way to get a paycheck. He's a modern-day Roger Corman, but, you know, without the talent. Um... I'd like to read some of the films, the countless films that Mark Polonia has directed, okay? Yes. Okay. Amityville Death House. Amityville Island. Amityville Exorcism. Amityville in Space. That's my <laughs> favorite. I'm surprised he hasn't done the Amityville Goes West yet. But there's also Virus Shark. Doll Shark, Jurassic Shark, Sharkula, Sharkenstein, Jurassic Shark 2, Aquapocalypse, Land Shark, and my favorite, Shark Encounters of the Third Kind. And then, of course, his magnum opus, Revolt of the Empire of the Apes. Um, <laughs> and here we are on our second Mark Polonia film. Hell on the Shelf. I had an idea originally uh, that Mark Polonia cranks out so many no-budget movies that we could just spend an entire summer just doing uh, like Mark Polonia movies or like sh low-budget shark movies uh, like Santa... San Santa Jaws, was that the one we saw last year? Santa Jaws, yes. Santa Jaws. Or uh, Amityville movies. There's a crap ton of those. Or just Mark Polonia movies for an entire summer. But after watching this week's movie, Hell on the Shelf. Fuck no, we're not doing a Mark Polonia summer. <laughs> I absolutely refuse. I hate this movie. First off, it's not the right elf. All of the posters have the famous elf from Elf on a Shelf. Yes. But then you see the movie, and it's just this, this hideous goodwill abortion 
Uh, Bunny, what are your thoughts on this movie? What I thought it was a, on I thought it was a good looking elf. If anything, I think the elf looked too cute. Okay. And they needed to creep it up a little more. Yeah. Because it was a bit too cute. Uh, overall, what I thought about it, I... It's kind of like creation of the humanoids in that I want this to be a better movie than it is. You know what I mean? And it's like, and it's like picking up points in my head for how it should have been as opposed to how it is. Yeah. I think that's Mark Polonia's MO that the title comes first. Yes. The most important thing in a Mark Polonia film is a title. And it doesn't actually matter what the movie is. Like, I like the concept of hell on the shelf. Okay, so an elf on the shelf is possessed and, you know, is killing people. Okay, I'm down with that. The movie sucks ass. But it's an interesting premise. And I imagine that that would be the same thing that you would say if you watched... uh, Shark Encounters of the Third Kind or Amityville in Space. Amityville in space. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So it's his movies are good in theory, in, in theory. premise, yes. But they they miss the landing. I I liked the seventies <clears throat> ish documentary feel that they kind of opened with. And yeah, the we're opening not text able to maintain. But... Yeah, the opening text says that this is quote a true story documented over three days by a parapsychology crew, and I did believe that opening because this definitely looks like it took three days to film. Yes, if it took more than three days to film Hell on a Shelf, I will eat my hat. So, so it was, it was also very s- reminiscent to me of a lot of the cheap ass documentaries I would watch as a kid on like Bigfoot or the Loch Ness Monster. Or, yeah. Like it was in something like this that I first saw the Warrens. Yeah, the freaking, you know, it, it upsets me that Blumhouse has turned their story more legitimate you know like uh the the conjuring three uh annabelle two based on a true story uh based on a true uh based on true bullshit that two con artists said happened yeah I, i wouldn't consider that based on a true story but whatever uh i was sad to see that actor Duke Van Sant wasn't in this movie. Yes, that was a disappointment. What's the point in watching a Mark Polonia film if Duke Larson isn't in it? And the general premise was... The general premise was good, okay? It's a haunted house. There are these two brothers playing in the basement. They find this elf... They get into a fight. One of the kids falls down the stairs, breaks his neck, and dies. Okay, that's a good setup for a haunted house story or an investigation or, you know, anything like that. Yeah. But that's it. Past there, everything else fails. The script fails. The acting fails. Like, Jesus Christ, dude, this is a horror movie. Why are you shooting this in full fucking daylight? 70% of the movie is just two guys talking to static. Yeah. Can you hear us? 
Can you hear us? And it's like, okay, stretch that out for an hour and 15 minutes. Yeah. I would like to take some time with you, Bunny, during this podcast, during this discussion of Hell in a Shelf, to discuss how much damage the 2007 film Paranormal Activity has done to Hollywood horror movies. I have not seen a single one of those fucking things. Okay, but it was the first film to be like, okay, it's a found footage horror movie. Okay, those exist. But the found footage specifically comes from like home security camera footage. It cost only $215,000 to make, and it made about $200 million. It was so successful that it spawned seven films in total of video game and a bajillion freaking copycats of movie makers that say, okay, I can also make a film using home security footage and stretch that into an hour and a half. And it, like, I, I, I swear the first 25 minutes is the director of the film explaining the tools that a parapsychologist would use with all the excitement of Ben Stein on NyQuil. Yes. So that was exciting. The director, Mark Polonius, plays Max Simonet in this. And wow, move over, M. Night Shyamalan. Here's another director who thinks he can act. Yeah. This movie, I swear this movie felt like three end games long. That's how long this movie felt. But it's a tight hour 15. But you wouldn't know it. Because it's so <laughs> such a long movie where so little happens. I I still think it has a certain a certain kind of charm in its horrible way. And again, I think it's because there's a there's a better movie here that didn't happen. Yeah, you know, like uh, they strap a they strap a camera to the elf. And they show the elf yeah. running around like that could have been good. Yeah. That could have been really good. That could have been a really could've. scary fucking scene, you yeah. know? And yeah, no, it wasn't. Yeah, no, it was not. But was somehow, not. somehow with me, it's picking up additional points for, for it could have been good. Yeah, okay. That that makes sense. It's an interesting premise just done in a very bad way. It... And then the equipment they used to talk to the ghosts sounds exactly like someone is burning bacon on a stove. And it yeah. drove me nuts. Yeah. The burning of bacon is about 60% of this movie. And it just gro- drove me crazy. This alleged film with finger quotes is basically just two dudes talking over static and the other bits. A lot of them are just silent security footage. And I hell on the shelf. It's about a murderous elf on the shelf that kills people. I thought it would be a so bad. It's good, but it's barely a movie. And I also kind of liked, (sighs) but see, then, then then they kind of lost it. But like, when the elf was just kind of moving around the house and they would get freaked out and talk about it, I found, I found that kind of fun. Because I found uh, these felt like kids who have grown up and, they're, and now they're getting down to the bottom of it. You know what I mean? Like, I, okay, I will, I will give them points because there is a sort of charm to the idea of like, this is coronavirus conspiracy, but without the talent. You, yes. I, I, I can still give this movie points because it does very much feel like this is just three dudes on a weekend. Yes. Saying, hey, let's throw a movie together. It just isn't fun. It could have been tons and tons better. Yes, it absolutely could have been. I found it to be nigh unwatchable. I found Virus Shark and Sharkula 
to be a bunch of dumb fun, but I this just I felt bad watching this because I'm like, oh my god, did Jeannie watch this? Yes. Fuck, I'm sorry, Jeannie. <laughs> this is an hour and fifteen of just moss growing. It was Sandy Wexler all over again. It was Sandy Wexler all over. Yes. I felt really bad because like it, it, I thought this movie would be stupid funny. There's another movie that we'll be doing later that I'm really excited to do. Um, we're not doing it next week, but I want to bring it up. I'm really excited. It's a very recent movie. It's called The Killing Tree. And it's okay. about a serial killer who dies, but then his spirit gets resurrected in a Christmas tree that continues the murder spree. Okay. Basically, was, it's a that was, it's a it's that a was an original rubber. Saturday Night Live sketch. Yeah, yeah, basically. So I'm really excited for the Killing Tree, but for all I know, it could be just as this movie has made me worried because I've got a lot of movies on deck that are like, oh, I've got to download this. Look at the title. And yeah. then it's like, oh, okay. That, this might not be good. But <laughs> it, yeah, it's a, a, it's a great idea in theory, but in practice, I hated this movie. I am so freaking high right now. So I was trying to think of how to save this. How do I save uh, our discussion of Hell on the Shelf? And then I came up with a great idea. Because I did not like this movie. Okay. So I'm tying it to the next movie we're doing. The next movie we will be doing is Jim Carrey's live action How the Grinch Stole Christmas. And it's my theory that both of these films are equally bad for different okay. reasons. Hell on the Shelf, it's no budget. It's just some dudes in one of their houses talking to Static. And it's a great premise, but nothing happens and it's boring and it's badly done. Jim Carrey's live action How the Grinch Stole Christmas. They have hundreds of millions of dollars. Massive sets. They have music, special effects, actual actors. Something tells me it's going to be just as annoying and horrible. <laughs> as Hell on the Shelf. I've actually never sat down and watched Jim Carrey's live action How the Grinch Stole Christmas all the way through. Neither have I. This is going to be great for us then. Because we will both be taking some fresh looks at this thing. And something tells me that Jim Carrey yelling directly in the camera for two hours is going to be just as annoying as watching Mark Polonia talk to Static. Yes. I have a real problem with everything Dr. Seuss. Because Dr. Seuss, so Dr. Seuss was married to a woman, and then he wrote kids' books, and then TV said, hey, we, Dr. Seuss, we love your kids' books. This is a mini shaft. Hey, Dr. Seuss, we love your kids' books. How about we turn uh, How the Grinch Stole Christmas into an animated TV cartoon? And Dr. Seuss said, I would love it. I've always had dreams of going to Hollywood. Did you see my movie, The 5,000 Fingers of Dr. T? Of course you didn't. No one did. It, but it's pretty freaking trippy. <laughs> yes, let's do this animated cartoon. And the animated cartoon was a huge success. So the TV network came back to Dr. Seuss and said, hey, we want to do a whole series. Of, car of cartoons based on your works and Dr. Seuss said yes these will all be successful and they will all play on TV forever have the rights to all of my books and they cranked out a bunch of Dr. Seuss cartoons and all of them suck ass <laughs> there's a cat in the hat one with like Bobby Sherman 
There's a voice of the cat in the hat, and he's all sticky. And then there's like a mashup. The Grinch Grinches the cat in the hat. And, and uh, there's one of the Sneeches and Green Eggs and Ham, and they're all just really cheap and horrible. And Dr. Seuss hated it. So Dr. Seuss said, okay, wife of mine, first wife of mine, I am never again giving the rights to any of my creations to anyone. And his first wife said, okay, I 100% support you. And then he, he, his first wife, uh, that bro he broke up with that. So then his second wife is like, uh, is like, uh, I support you, my husband, Dr. Seuss. And Hollywood's like, hey, it's the 90s now. We want to buy the rights to this and this and this. We want to make a big TV show for this and a movie for this and this and that. And Dr. Seuss says, no, get away from me, Hollywood, with your millions of dollars. I will never be selling the rights to this. But the second wife is like, come on, Dr. Seuss, we need the money. And uh, Dr. Seuss said, no. As long as I am living second wife, I will never be selling the rights. And Dr. Seuss's second wife said, okay, fine. While you're alive, huh? Hmm, interesting, interesting, interesting. Bobby, get the documents ready. My husband has a cold. Get the papers ready. <laughs> oh, what? My husband just died? That's a big shame. Everybody come over here. I'm selling a lot of them. And that's why immediately, live action Cat in the Hat, live action How the Grinch Stole Christmas, animated Lorax. It, there are kids now for whom the Cat in the Hat is primarily an animated PBS character who teaches kids about science. <laughs> Suddenly, uh, Dr. Seuss is everywhere because the second wife was like, oh, I don't give a shit. I need the money. I'm selling every character everywhere to everyone. So, you know, they did the same thing to, uh, to, uh, they did the same thing in, uh, Knives Out. They were just waiting for him to die. Yes, true. What, what was his name? What was his name? I forgot his, the writer's name. Uh, I saw Knives Out 2. You did? This past week. Yes. Glass Onion, when I went into the movie, it's playing in a limited number of theaters just for a week, and I think that's a big shame. I think that people definitely, that Netflix should keep it in theaters, they should expand it, it's a wonderful film, and you should watch it in theaters. I, I shudder to think of watching this on like my crappy-ass laptop. It's a great movie. It is fun, it's great to see it with an audience. There's a lot of twists and turns. I liked it more than I liked the first one. And um, when I first went into the movie, I had one specific thing in my head. If the movie Glass Onion does not play the Beatles song, I'm going to set this movie theater on fire. Okay, hey. so, I've, so not having heard anything on the news, I take it they had that song. The movie is so fun and so good, and there are so many twists and turns, and the character work is great. It's such a fun film that I completely forgot about what I was thinking of in the beginning. So finally, when the cred when when uh, the the lights dim, when the the screen dims, and the first credit pops up, and you you hear do do. I told you about strawberry fields. I had totally forgotten what I said in the beginning. And I marked out like I was at WrestleMania. <laughs> and they just played Stone Cold Steve Austin's music. I freaked out. Oh, they are playing it. Yes. All of you in the theater, you're safe. <laughs> Such a good movie. So much fun. And I absolutely loved it. And it is a damn shame that this movie is only out for one week in a small amount of theaters. If I had the gas money, I would drive over there again to see it. I drove over an hour to the theater that I go to only for the special things. I went there for... Did I go there for uh, the director's cut of Midsommar? Yes. Did I go there for The Lighthouse? Yes. 
Did I also go there for X Men Dark Phoenix? Yes, but it was IMAX tickets for free, and I got a keychain. <laughs> so, who is uh, up in that transaction? This gal. So, uh, it, it, <clears throat> great movie. Can't recommend it enough. I can't wait for it to come out on Netflix, only so that I can, you know, me and Gizmo and, and Max can watch it. It's just so much fun. Yeah. And I like it better than the first one, which says a lot because I saw that movie in theaters like six times. So that's all I've got for. <laughs> I forgot what we were doing for a second. Hell on the shelf. Uh, I will say, though, um, I'm kind of upset that I'm watching this movie. I kind of wish that I still worked in the children's department of the bookstore. Yeah. Because it would have been nice to know that this movie exists when I'm selling Elf on the Shelves. <laughs> you know, it would have been nice to, uh, you know, here you go, young child. Here's an Elf on the Shelf. And then lean over to the parents. There's a movie on Shudder. It's called Hell on the Shelf. Just search Mark Polonia. You know, that would have been nice. This is on Shudder? I'm just assuming. Okay. It's a it's a no budget horror movie, so I'm just assuming it's on Shutter. I'm just saying Shutter doesn't get the shining. <laughs> you know? Shutter gets hell on the shelf. Shutter Shutter doesn't get Doctor Sleep. Shutter gets Terrifier 2. Yes. <laughs> no offense to Psycho Gorman, but there's a certain budget of horror movies that I consider shudder movies. Uh-huh. I see. Mark, Pol Mark Polonia is a one-man asylum. He is a one-man full moon pictures. He is a one-man mockumentary. Uh, no, no, Mockbuster Studio. But yes. he's one dude. And I, I gotta give him a tip of the hat, but also don't watch Hell on a Shelf. It sucks. Get, get better. Yeah, get better. At least, at least make it campy. If this was campy, then it probably would have been a lot more fun, but it's just boring. And I, I guess they're trying to be scary and trying to be serious and taking a serious look at paranormal investigating, but it's it's an elf on the shelf that kills people. Uh -huh. The movie doesn't have to be this serious. And it would be nice if people died in it. Yeah. And then, like, oh, there's a twist. And there's a twist about who one of the characters actually is. And it's so shocking when it happens that Damn people go... Morning. It's so shocking that, like, what? You didn't tell me? I am shocked. Why didn't you tell me? It's like, wow, way to act. Yeah. Whoa, calm down, Dolores Fuller. Going for the Oscar over here. So, yeah, okay. I... Yeah, so, so... You take the fucking elf... And you lock it in like a glass box so it can't get out. Annabelle. Yeah. And you sell tickets for people to come see it. And you let the guy Max die of old fucking age. Yeah. Yeah. Annabelle. But that's when your cash cow dies. So yeah. it is it is to your advantage to keep Max alive. You would get Max on keto immediately. You know? Yeah. Like, okay, Max, you, it's time to go out for your jog. You know? Mm. You're going to yeah. want to keep Max as healthy for as long as possible so you yeah. can keep selling tickets to the little demonic doll you got in the glass box. Yeah, the demonic doll show. Yeah. Yeah. Makes sense to me. They just anyway, do not know how to make lemonade out of lemons. They do not. No. Well, when life gives you lemons. Do, 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 do. 
Well, that's it for this week's movie, How the Grinch Stole Christmas. And no, Hell on the Shelf. Next week, we're doing Jim Carrey's live action, How the Grinch Stole Christmas. Amber freaking loves that movie. Really? So Amber, yeah, she loves both of the live action Dr. Seuss movies. Um, If anything, I think that they should make a third live action Dr. Seuss movie with an annoying uh, comedian starring in it. Yeah. Like uh, Green Eggs and Ham starring Dane Cook. Boom. Make it happen. There you go. Uh, the Sneeches starring Polly Shore. <laughs> uh, I can't think of anybody else. But it 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 upsets my uh, OCD that they only made two live action Doctor Seuss movies. Make a third. You well, know, just just yeah. for the symmetry. Yeah. Yeah. So next week. It'll be the first time that either Bunny and I are first watch of Jim Carrey's How the Grinch Stole Christmas. Very excited about this. I have seen the animated Grinch movie with Doctor Strange in it. Really? Dinklebird slapped you back. I saw that one. It's just called The Grinch, and that one was okay. But the thing, the thing that upsets me, though, is that The Grinch has a good reason to hate Christmas. At least in the animated one. In the animated one where uh uh where uh Benedict Dingle Dingle Dinglepatch uh is the voice of the Grinch. Like, oh, he was born like an orphan and people would make fun of him and he spent every Christmas alone, and it's like, okay, he has every reason to hate Christmas. Maybe get off his ass. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So I'm interested. Well, to see. but that's that's what it is. If you're not following their religion, then yeah. then you're the demon who has to live in the cave up in the mountains in the snow, yeah. all alone. Yeah, it's basically like a like all the Who's are Marjorie Taylor Green. Yeah, the Grinch is the only normal person. Yeah. Uh so that's going to be next week, next episode. Going to be a lot of fun. But now that I'm looking back at this episode, the highs and the lows, uh, Mark Polonia, Joyce Brothers, American Badass, Crocodile Hugging, B- Build-A-Bear. I got to say, I think this has been a pretty good episode of the podcast. This I has been a damn won. good episode. Okay, good. I felt the same way, but I feel like you're the person who makes that distinction, Bunny, not me. And I didn't want to step on your toes or anything <laughs> like that. The last thing I want to do is be toe-stepping. Yes. I don't want to step on Bunny's toes. But yes, I concur with this assessment, with your assessment, good sir. No, that's right. Yeah. Okay, well, Max is gone. (laughs) But yes, I concur with your assessment, good sir. So until next week, I am Bunny Williams. And I am Reverend May Lynn. And on behalf of Natasha and Mal and Max and Eleanor and everybody else, I just want to say thanks for listening. And we will see you next week, you godless heathens. And you do shuffles and poopy tits. And whatever Maxwell would say. Cookie! <laughs> okay. Very, very specific. Do 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 do. Do 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 do. Your pump's in a pull. Do 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 do. You pop a do wow. Cut and print. I play on cookie. That's a wrap.